I was a sick child. As a child uh, in my early primary school, I was very, very sick. So my father used to indulge a lot in me, he used to provide me a trunk full of toys and I would rip them apart and take a canister of ghee and cut it out, make my own toy since I could make my own machine. I would take the machine out of the toy and fit it into that toy and roam around the village and everybody thought with a you know, village kind of a psyche that he'll become an engineer. Then I also used to indulge in a lot of sports, used to play kabaddi, hockey, cricket, volleyball, table tennis in those small schools. Like, uh, you know, once you're good at something, your teacher suggests you to do everything. You, you are the one, you are the hero, you know, you have to do everything. And I also used to indulge in a little bit of painting, poetry, and I had read, read a lot of literature. I was uh, fond of Punjabi literature, of course, because being a Punjabi. Then I also a uh, whole lot of Dostoevsky and, you know, Russian uh, literature. And I used to be good at studies too, fortunately. And uh, uh, I was uh, sent to a college to study pre uh, prep non medical. Those days used to be like that. I failed miserably on all the subjects except English. And then I failed once again. Then my brother thought he has his interest in art, so he took me to the College of Art Chandigarh where I luckily got admission into painting. Then I moved to printmaking. So I completed my five years diploma in printmaking and graphics with the subject Which photography. Pardon? I completed my course in 82 and then in the college itself I, I joined the film society movement at that time in the you know uh, mid 70s film society movement in India was very very active and I was lucky to be the youngest member of the society although I didn't qualify to become the member because those films were all uncensored which were being screened. And I, I saw the whole lot of the world cinema at that time, especially the European, uh, East European cinema, Istvan Gaal, Istvan Sabo, Zoltan Fabri, Zoltan Hazari, you know, and including Bergman, Kurosawa, Satyajitre, all those, you know, I saw and I, I got greatly influenced by that. So I wanted to become a cinematographer, you know, I wanted to become a kabaddi player, then a hockey player, then a cricket player, <laughs> then an engineer, then a painter, and then I was bad at painting. Then I took to, you know, I'll become a cinematographer. Then my father fell ill and uh, maybe Navtej is here. Navtej Singh Jaw, the you know, famous dancer. And his, his uh, sister was married in Germany. And his uh, brother-in-law, he was trying to help me uh, get into Germany to get uh, admission in cinematography because of my father being sick. I couldn't go to Germany, so I stuck to still photography. And that's what I've been doing till today. I'll start with my first series which I did uh, in 1980 when I was still a student of College of Art since I was reading a lot of literature and I was also uh, doing theatre, street theatre at that time. And I was influenced by the theory of alienation. As a villager, when I came to Chandigarh, as you all know, Chandigarh is a city which is totally, completely planned city by the famous uh, 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 architect called La Corbusier. And Having come from a you know, very chaotic kind of a life from a village into a very organized planned city, everybody at that time, uh, Chandigarh was also very young, people uh, used to be very, very you know, lonely, alone, segregated and at the same time they would try to feel Chandigarhians. They would like if I speak Punjabi, somebody speaks Haryanvi and another person another language they would try to speak, not their mother tongue, but some, something which was acceptable in Chandigarh. They would like to be what they were not. Now things have changed, people have started talking across, across the wall to each other. Earlier they used to be, you know, segregated and the alienation used to be quite, quite, you know, predominant. So this is the first series, can we go ahead with this? And even now sometimes there is a bench invariably planted outside the principal's office or somebody, some officer's office and the peons, uh, unfortunately we have to call them peons, there's no you know, other name which I could think of. They used to sit outside, they would sit together but not be with each other at the same time, they would be lost in their own thoughts. So this is uh, one of the, you know, child of one of the peons who is now a full-fledged engineer, maybe uh, he must be having kids, at that time he was hardly 10 year old in 1980. You can see a whole lot of you know, influence of theatre in my work and I find uh, quite incapable of expressing myself through just one picture. 
she will fi find invariably all my series, uh, pictures are in the shape of a series. Like, you know, uh, you have to kind of you know, listen to a lap in the beginning and dheere dheere phir badhat hoti hai, phir jod jhala aata hai. So, that, that's the way you, you know, reach a crescendo in my kind of work. You, you get to see the body of work. And this, this work was shown in, uh, I think Samar Joda was also there that year in Lille, in Festival of France in India. So this was a part of uh, three, three uh, um, photographers, uh, Lucian Harvey, a very great uh, French photographer, and uh, uh, Stéphane Couturier, a very well-known architecture photographer of France. It was a huge festival of uh, India in Lille uh, three, four years back, where a whole lot of Indian photographers, artists, even uh, Subodh Gupta, they were all there. This is a series which I started doing. This, this is a very, you know, a uh, special kind of work for which uh, I got a bit of recognition and uh, since I had this painting background and acting, uh, I, I was asked to do an assignment for a magazine called Theatre Pinna which never saw the light of the day but uh, I was the chief photographer and they asked me to do a, a, a picture for the title. What I did was I requested one of my teachers who was a very good painter who still is a very good painter called Viren Tanwa and I took his painting and requested a person to act in front of the painting as a headless person. That series is not there, but later on, I, I did some more pictures with another uh, one of my teacher called Professor Raj Jain, uh, his work, because his work was also related in some way to what was happening at that time in Punjab. It was very, very, very you know, difficult time that uh, we were going through. Can we have the pictures, please? So in the background there is a painting painted by my teacher uh, and in the front there is a girl and this girl is also a photographer many must be knowing in Delhi called Renuka Puri. She is working for Express now. That time she was a student of College of Art in Chandigarh. And this, this series uh, was a bit difficult because uh, some people might be interested in knowing. It was actually clicked on uh, transparency film and then I put the film directly into the enlarger onto a normal photography paper. But as you know, like when, you, when you put a, a transparency film into the enlarger, what you get is negative image. But I didn't want the whole of the image to, to look negative. I wanted some portions to look negative. So I painted the body. I painted the lips, say, green, so, so that they appear red. And I painted the face red and, and the hair also, so that the hair don't, don't you know, become completely uh, you know, white. So the, the colors of the painting are completely, you know, altered, complement colors. This was, uh, uh, at that time, you know, Punjab, Jammu and Kashmir, Herzegovina, Bosnia, Scotland, many, many places, there were, you know, there was a lot of turmoil, lot of killing, lot of, and wherever there is violence, and mostly violence takes place in underdeveloped, you know, countries, and those countries, Violence again is, is targeted you know, against men. Men get killed and women are left behind to suffer. I didn't want to, you know, uh, of course I do respect um, uh, photojournalism, journalistic photography, but I didn't want to, you know, project a very gory, uh, you know, uh, violent kind of an image of war or destruction. I wanted some kind of, you know, subtlety in the picture. So. And, and, and in my family, my mother, were, they were you know, five, six sisters, and they, they, like, all of them were widows. And, and then my you know, maternal uncles were not there also. They, my mummies were also widows. So I've seen a lot of widows in the house who were either some, some people committed suicide, some people were killed, some people died a natural death. But women, socially, emotionally, economically, you know, security point of view, they are left behind to suffer. That's why there is a predominance of women in, in this series. This, this actress is, uh, she became very famous actress after that. She was that, that time doing uh, theater in the National School of Drama called uh, Navneet Nishan. Some of you must have seen that serial called Tara. This is uh, another series which, which uh, because one of my maternal uncles, he was uh, you know, the sarpanch of a village, but he, his, he lost his wife early and uh, then he became a kind of a sadhu or a tantric. He used to perform those tantric things, which the family was not very happy with. But uh, you know, he would tell me that one, I, I know, you know 
स्टोरीज ऑफ तेती करोड़ देवता की कहानियाँ मुझे आती हैं मैन यूज़ टू गो टू यू नो कवर्स ऑफ मुस्लिम वुड टेक द बॉडी आउट मे बी पुट सुरमा इन देर आईज और यू नो एंड देर समथिंग टिपिकल विच ही यूज टू टेल मी आई डोंट नो वेदर ही डिड और नॉट आई आई डोंट ट्रस्ट एट ऑल इट इज ओनली द इमेज मेटाफॉरिकली विच आई टुक फ्रॉम हिज स्टोरीज ही ही सेट ही वुड यू नो पुट काइंड ऑफ अ ब्लैंकेट अ खेस इन पंजाबी विच इज कॉल्ड अराउंड द वेल put nail it all around and sit on that and he would say that you know he would raise the water of the well uh, with his powers or uh, if somebody's died you know unnatural death and they say if somebody has achieved that kind of uh, you know power by sheer uh, practice that person which in that case my mama my maternal uncle was the person that he would be able to bring that person to life for a few moments so that the family could talk to him then again it's a story you know it's a myth or it's whatever and then he said if if that person doesn't have enough power that that person could be consumed by the very you know fire from which he was supposed to bring the body out so that's why i it used to be called sive jagana sive as you all know is uh, the, the 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 place where you bury your dead and jagana is you know waking so one of my friends he translated for me into english called waking the dead that's why i titled the series as waking the dead my basic purpose of creating the series was trying to you know kind of uh, explore uh, various thought processes what go on in you know all of us mind uh, we are all in a way worried about death or you know fascinated by death or death some in some cultures death is celebrated there is a fear of death but like as children when we are born we never think of death you know we are fearless we are so innocent then gradually the feeling or the notion of death you know is instilled into your psyche so i, I these are various facets of death which i have tried to explore you know visually in my pictures <coughs> this is a very you know ethereal translucent transparent you know kind of an you know, as the body evapor evaporates into into nothingness for this i i had to request uh, a lady from london she was a british uh, actress and and and, a, and an artist and i i took uh, the patal ka wood the white wood white body of the woman white blonde hair and the white cloth on top so that there is nothing jarring in the picture various facets of death like sometimes you feel you know bundled um, in in a, like you know you, are, you you don't have any freedom to express these birds are not real they've been uh, made from fiberglass in, in the hindu mythology we have that you know the soul kind of flies So some of these backgrounds I, I painted. This is the, as they say in Punjabi, there is a saying, say "balo nikki porsalat," means uh, there is a very narrow path, you know, through which one's soul has to pass through. It's a very painful process. So it's a whole uh, big sheet of paper which is painted uh, underneath this this actress. this is a continuity of the same series uh, it's again waking the dead kind of a thing but like i titled it as uh, shows of uh, shows of the unknown but with a different actress here like i have this maybe almost uh, 10 by 15 feet uh, you know pieces of paper joined together then i painted on that and underneath there is uh, grass which has been sprayed with uh, with paints some of these pictures are in the collection of the museum of asian art berlin because they gave me a show in 2000 when when this museum opened after renovation
in this picture the the, the male model is me because uh, uh, unfortunately when i was shooting uh, i had uh, arranged for a male model and at the last moment uh, my assistant comes to me she was a girl she said sir i can't come into the studio because uh, my mother has refused that you can't go in the studio because there are going to be female you know naked bodies then uh, then i get another bad news that my male model say that I, he can't uh, unclothe in front of a woman <laughs> so i had to you know so i had nobody i had to put my camera on the tripod to shoot and i had to you know unclothe myself at the last moment <laughs> i don't know that after that i got into the habit <laughs> because i am preempting a question and some people ask why why yourself you know so that is that is the main reason this is a series see, uh, uh, since i done these two series one was related to you know violence another one related to death and uh, then there was iran and iraq war going on and things had happened in afghanistan then whole lot of you know when you, you see whole lot of at least that time indian media was not as strong and we had bbc and cnn and all those you know western uh, electronic media was showing uh, pictures of war all the time you'll switch switch on you'll see guns blood you know bodies being you know thrown or killed or carried and i thought like you know how how long can we you know as an artist uh, carry on showing pictures of death destruction you know gory bloody pictures and when our children grow looking at those pictures what kind of human beings they will become you know because what what we what are we giving them life carries on in spite of everything life life doesn't stop there are you know positive aspects to life also and why not create something which is positive that's why i created this series after the turmoil after the up that so these are you know very tender <coughs> intimate moments of love care care getting together in in these pictures also the bodies are painted and none of these pictures uh, is is a photoshop picture the real pictures and some of the images i have planted here and there like some leaves which i found later on they were not like enough so i i, I plucked with a with a photoshop tool from one corner planted it somewhere else and all all the pictures you have seen till now they are they are on the negative not not none of these is on the digital i didn't even know photoshop shop didn't even have a computer in fact and all the pictures are on 35 mm negatives this is a series which which i'm continuing with i see self not as as myself you know self is you know including your friends including including your family the people you know you become what you are because of others you know otherwise one is nothing as you know you know in sufi poetry there's a whole lot of uh, you know emphasis on on the ego you know how how to kind of you know get rid of the ego i'm always concerned with uh, you know people who who are uh, you know the working class so this is a dhaba where i used to eat i'm showing only a few pictures you know of each series i i see a lot of you know 
rhythmical dance-like movement amongst people who are from the working class. In spite of all the worries and sufferings, you find a lot of joy, a lot of you know, sense of uh, uh, celebration when they are working. And most of these Dhaba people, they, they, like, they wake up 4 o'clock in the morning and work till maybe 12 in the night in dark, dingy places. So that's why you find the pictures very, very dark. The walls are dark. You know, the, the metaphorically, you know, the darkness in their lives is shown uh, through the environment. This is a series of pictures which I clicked while traveling abroad. The London Tube. Again, a, a station in London called Hounslow East. It, it is uh, not the same way now. It's, it's clicked in 93. This is Oxford. This, uh, many of you might recognize, this is an uh, installation by Boltansky, that famous uh, European you know, installation artist. <coughs> this is a street in Jakarta, Indonesia, where there's a whole a row, a row of uh, uh, portrait makers. And they're kind of, you know, jhopris, not jhopris, exactly kokha kind of places, but they're mostly out of job. This is a very uh, important picture. Uh, at that time, uh, Bamiyan Buddhas had been destroyed. 9-11 had happened. And I was in this place called Borobudur in Indonesia. Indonesia, as many would know, is the uh, you know, most populated, Muslim populated country. And mo most of them are Muslims there. So on this uh, shrine of Buddha, there are 84 you know, such uh, Buddha statues. And all of them are covered by those stupas. You know? Uh, in the background. Only one of these has been kept uh, open for, for the, so that people can have a look at that. But uh, since a whole lot of uh, the world community had started thinking negatively about the Muslims, uh, but look at these Muslim women you know, admiring or whatever, uh, the, the very Buddha statue had been uh, you know, destroyed. This is a, a, a roadside kitchen in Bali. Uh, if you see carefully, there is a chicken uh, and there is a chopping board. And the chicken is looking towards the chopping board. But the chicken is real. And I didn't plant it there. <laughs> this is a show window in Jakarta. I did nothing to it, it was as it is. You might find a, quite a lot of you know, variation in the work. Maybe some people might think, what is this? But as a photographer, since you have a camera, you, you can't stop. So the continuity, you know, the, our culture is as if it has been continuing for the th last thousands of years. You, you see you know, all those images b at the back. And the pagalis in the back, pagalis in the front, the, the color combination, as if the, the you know, tradition frozen in time. All these images of Banaras, uh, 2006, 7 Shivaratri. Since I live in uh, Corbusier city, so I, I have had been invited to many you know, world forums to, to you know, show my work on Corbusier. So I, I clicked a lot of pictures of Corbusier and Corbusier. if you are familiar with his architecture, you'll find that there is a lot of uh, you know, play of light, importance of light, of course, of volume and structures is there. But uh, he, he plays with light as, as if you know, he's creating poetry. So he, he uses light or spaces in a very, very poetic manner. So my emphasis is not to capture the architectural you know, uh, 
what you call mesmerizing images but only some segments where you see the Shia poetry. This is uh, one of the churches in uh, a, a small place called Firmini in France where I was uh, given a residency, a French photographer had come to India. I had gone there, so I went there almost five times. This was a church in, in because it was incomplete. In 1965, it, the work was stopped. Then they restarted in uh, 2005. So I, I tried to capture these images. This this green space is actually a very narrow, small place. But uh, he uses uh, you know, the light in such a way. And this this kind of an you know, roshandan, uh, and the top of the roshandan has been painted green. And that top is, is the top of the in French, they call it Iglis, the church. And those lights, what you see, they are not actually colored glasses. This is a narrow kind of a pipe kind of a thing. Not narrow, very huge. It's on the top. So the, the, it's been painted colored from inside. So the color, what you see, is not the colored glass, but the light falling on those natural colors. And what you see, the patterns on the right-hand side corner, they are created by those you know, star-like holes. In the, in, the, in the building itself, he has you know, a large number of those holes which create this you know, very musical, lyrical pattern and it keep, keeps changing the, with, the, with the movement of the sun. And this church doesn't function like a normal church. There is no prayer which takes place there. There is no priest. It functions as, as a cultural center. This is another building by Corbusier called, uh, it's a monastery near uh, Lyon in France uh, called La Tourée. The, the friars are, you know, are trained there. There is one of the friars. There's a very enclosed kind of a space where these friars are not supposed to get in touch with the rest of the world. They are in fact not even allowed to look at the landscape. They, they can only look skywards. They, they, for, for their walk, there is a huge you know, terrace which has been created on top of the building which has again more than six feet uh, high walls uh, all around and this, art, this is one of the examples. This is a window and there is this concrete you know kind of a structure which has been created outside the window. They, they can look at the sky but they cannot look at people. This is um, Chandigarh's uh, civil secretariat. This is the tallest building there and it serves as a secretariat for both the governments of Punjab and Haryana and this, this I have titled as Corridors of Power because you know a lot of people from Punjab and Haryana come there to get their work done but with the sheer size of the building and you know the, the massive uh, structure they get overawed overpowered that's why you know I call them corridors of power this series uh, summer was there in, uh, um, in, the, in the French show there in Lille. This uh, is an image from another of his building uh, known as uh, Ranchon. I'm, I'm not you know, familiar with French pronunciation, so please forgive me, you know, those who know French. I could never pronounce it correct because uh, you know, when I had to travel to this, this place, it was uh, almost 700 miles and it took me almost 10 hours to you know, go in the car. and. Uh, this building is on the uh, French-Swiss border, one of his most uh, prominent buildings created in the early 50s, mid 50s. And this uh, is the candle, um, in the, as you see in the, in the, usually in the church. And there is this, the wall behind is completely white. But I've taken the picture in such a manner so the wall becomes dark. Uh, but uh, the color on the top I have added with Photoshop from the candle, picked from the camp candle and added up there. These are some of the images of the work which I am now working on. These are pictures by uh, you know, dancers, Sufi dancers from Lahore called Malang. 
it's a very very you know energetic powerful dance form where they almost go into a trance but uh, very very powerful I'm working more on this kind of work because I'm quite fascinated by you know various sides to one's personality <laughs> any question please see i i was doing this kind of work i started this this kind of work in 1983 when i was trying to explore you know another way of uh, expressing myself through the you know medium of photography uh, but uh, trying to do something entirely different which normal you know photography tools could not do you know like uh, something which is given which is there you click it and you maybe you know uh, click it in a very poetic uh, manner like raghurai does or many others of the uh, practitioners of the art who do you know documentary uh, photography but uh, i want to do something else you know so add something else and i did this kind of work first time when i went to london uh, to show my work there in, uh, during this uh, south asian visual arts festival and then people told me that what kind of work you're doing is conceptual the word conceptual you know intro was introduced to me that time so, so something which is uh, you know uh, not given you know something which which is you know developed as a concept in your mind first as you know pushpala was also talking about you know, there are things which keep coming to your mind you keep thinking about them i used to make small notes of them then the maybe in five or six days i'll create the whole series maybe after a couple of years or more so it's basically a concept which is there in your mind which you want to translate visually um, into a form that's why it titled as conceptual otherwise uh, it is it, it, it these are portraits basically you can call self portraits portraits but for me uh, i never think because all artists you know throughout the history they have been fascinated by the self you know to take take anybody take rembrandt van gogh you know you take picasso or even the recent uh, history everybody you know, either clicks oneself or paints oneself or sculpts oneself you know but i i didn't want to do it with my face you know i wanted to do it uh, this is me the way i look at this world this is my portrait that's all so there is very little difference you can see like the the after the turmoil series or the conceptual self portraits they are in a way similar because these are these are i know my images uh, or my ideas which i want to translate into into visuals the question is that do you think the idea of self portraits in itself is uh, based on the idea of alienation uh, somewhere i mean uh, because uh, it is it is taking i think a little too far it can be but uh, see self self has many manifestations you know so how can you uh, uh, can you say that uh, it is it is alienating we are alienated in, in many ways yes like a lot of people are there in this crowd there must be some people who must be feeling completely alienated but uh, on the face of it it's not visible so in in the self portrait also if you if you want to really you know include that aspect into it it might be there at the subconscious level but not i think very clearly yeah one question are you going to go back to film now since uh, he couldn't do film which you wanted to not today technology is there and see when you grow older film is such a difficult you know medium where you need a lot of organizational skills management a lot of infrastructure and a nice team around you to work with and the stamina uh, and of course the you know finances Uh, so I, I, if I, if I am given an opportunity, I'll still do it. I, it's still there in my mind, but I am not feeling as enthusiastic and as passionate about it as I used to earlier. Yeah, no. The reason I'm saying is because you know you were so exposed as you grew up, uh, you know, music, painting, going to art school, and all that, and your work is very, very personal. So uh, today, technology is, you know, it doesn't mean that you have to go to a film school and get a MFA or something. True. Uh, you know, uh, it's much more easier to work with. So I really wonder if you, on on personal front, if you want to do, uh, I mean, if we can see some work down the road which is on film medium. Uh, It, it's just coming to my mind now. It's, it's been there for the last <laughs> couple of years, but uh, but, but the, you know, logistics <laughs> sometimes. You know, and I'm uh, I'm also you know, these days. That that's why you may not have seen uh, uh, quite a lot of work in the recent years since you know I've been 
you know, taking care of the you know, Dalit Kala Academy in Chandigarh. So I am now more involved in, in a kind of showing others work, you know, uh, bringing others to, you know, to, to the forefront rather than showing myself. So I've not really been creating. So the creative aspect is at the you know, back of my mind at the moment. I, I'm you know, becoming a medium in between the audience and the, the creative people like yourself. So, but, but definitely, given an opportunity or maybe with time I might. See, when it comes to my, uh, the, the other kind of work which you saw, which is you know, arranged, managed, what we call you know, conceptual. In, in that kind of work, uh, there is no change because I still work on, although with the digital camera now, but I don't alter the images in Photoshop. But the things which I used to do in the dark room, like uh, it was a very, very tedious process. Like sometimes one uh, picture would take two days to print because see when you're printing from transparency, transparency has uh, more layers and those because of those layers it takes longer exposure sometimes the bulbs would fuse because like and i used to do a lot of burning and dodging and with the burning and dodging sometimes you you reach a particular area which you want like you're giving say one particular area one hour of exposure then there are 10 20 different areas which need more exposure so you you, you can imagine one test print itself would require 10 hours of you know exposure then you come out with it, then you see it's and, and those days sometimes the enlargers used to be where you know the filters used to come one by one, you know. And then later on I had another enlarger where all the three filters you know would be there together. And that, that makes th things easier. Once you like click uh, uh, sorry, uh, make a test print with the changing filters, you don't know how much time you gave to blow filter, how much time to give to the other filter, unless you make you know very um, uh, fastidious notes of that. And, and that that used to be quite quite uh, frustrating. At the same time, quite uh, you know satisfactory uh, exercise also. But uh, uh, as far as Photoshop go goes, there, there, there are many misconceptions. I think technology is always for good. I don't belong to that era where I say oh, purani film hoti thi, badi badiya hoti thi. Digital to kuch nahi hai. Film has its own importance. Like when television came into existence, video came into existence, people thought film will, will disappear. They both exist uh, in different shape, different form. All new, I think, technology has to be welcomed. We have to use it judiciously. How well we can use it depends upon us. And uh, some people can do And I'm not against Photoshop at all. But when it comes to photojournalism, when it comes to documentary photography, of course, this, there is big no, you can't alter with the image. But when you're doing my kind of work or Pushpala's kind of work, when you do not claim that you are presenting the truth, a reality, you know, something which is a moment which has existed, then you can do anything. People do it with a brush. What does a painter do? Painter, uh, within the quotes, please don't misunderstand me, painting is the biggest lie. You know, because lie in a positive manner. So like you, you are creating something which is not there, which is there in your imagination. So similarly with Photoshop, you can do that. Um, I would, and uh, I think if I'm not wrong, uh, Manjunath Kamath is doing uh, this kind of work. Am I right? So it, it, I think it's, it's, but for me, personally, I find uh, digital much more easier because now I don't have to, you know, spend five days in the dark room to get two prints. Now I sit on my computer, you know, transfer my work, and you can get the similar print, print after print, whatever number I decide, 5 or 6 or 10, but uh, in, in, in the dark room, I never used to get the second print the same as it was earlier. Uh, the, the other print would always be, you know, different. So that, that's uh, the way things uh, have become much more easier. Good. I'm just apologizing so, for this question. Um, maybe it's because of um, being from the UK where we're still concerned about race and representation. But I was interested in your juxtaposition between you as the Asian male body and the white woman female body. And I was wondering whether that was something consciously you were commenting upon or why you chose the subjects that you chose and the way in which you actually constructed the, that series of pictures. Both the death series as well as the one where you're the subject with her. It's from our reading, from the UK, it's, it has different connotations. Can I answer? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I can't see her, so I didn't know whether the Me. question is finished. I know I can, I can recognize her voice. I met you last night. Uh, 
uh, see, um, honestly, I, I, I don't think like that. But see, like there's, there is no religious, racial connotation to my work at all. Uh, uh, the white body was used by the sheer need to present the thought of death. Like sometimes we feel death is, you know, something which is very, very translucent. You know, very, you know, something very which, which evaporates into nothingness. So I wanted some very, very light feel. Yes, we, I, I don't really believe in t to be uh, politically correct. Sometimes I'm doing what I'm doing very consciously. You know, yeah. because. It's something which is coming from the heart, you know. Sometimes there's a lot of emphasis which is, you know, on the written word. Sometimes you see a whole lot of set of work. Please forgive me for saying that. I'm not an art critic. I'm not a, you know, photo journalist. And this is my personal feeling. In some countries, what is happening, the emphasis is not in the, on the visual image. The image is on what is being written about it. Sometimes you read a whole lot of things. When you look at the image, wow, a child could take that picture, yeah. You know? <laughs> again. Again, I'm saying that with a very sense of responsibility, sometimes to reach that level of, you know, clicking a picture like a child, you need a Satyajit Ray, you need a Raghurai, you know. It's not easy to take that kind of a picture, to reach that kind of a level of simplicity where everybody thinks I can paint like that, I can click like that. But sometimes there is a thought, like somebody who says, I, I can write a book, I, I'm a fiction writer. But then he employs a painter, he employs a photographer, he employs a filmmaker to do that. What is happening now is some people, they are usurping the space which was solely for you know, visual creative artists. Some people who are good at writing but not really very good at image creation. They are creating some images and creating a whole lot of stories and then you know, present them in galleries and there is a whole lot of you know, space available for them. That, that's what I really wanted to you know. Uh, say. But uh, uh, regarding your uh, uh, question, of course, my, my basic requirement was to have uh, a set of uh, things and people where I could create that image, where like even, even the you know, black hair or black eyebrows could, you know, could be jarring that image. Does it answer? Yeah, yeah, I take back my apology, by the way. No, 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 no offenses meant are taken. No, no, I'm, I'm a very clear-hearted person. I, 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 I wouldn't take, uh, I hope you also don't take any offenses. One Anybody? Brief question, please. No, just following from that question, did you paint your eyebrows as well? Yes, I did, I did. I painted even now. <laughs> were, you, were you ever influenced by Dual Michaels at any stage? Uh, see, what happened, I had seen some, while I was studying in College of Art, I don't remember the photographer's name, one of those you know, photography magazines, I saw somebody painting on photographs. That's what I had seen, that's all. And that time, like, you know, internet was not available and, you know, you couldn't see films on, uh, on you know, video or something like that. I only saw the conceptual photographer's work when I first went to England and USA. And uh, I haven't seen, I haven't heard this photographer's name, but I did see like Cindy Sherman's work. I did see um, uh, Peter Joel Witkins, if somebody has seen that, then Sodek's work and uh, um, some other photographers. Then I came to know there's a whole lot of, you know, that, that's what gave me a lot of assurance of what, that, what I was doing was maybe right. Before that, I was thinking maybe, you know, I'm just, you know, fooling around, taking somebody's painting and painting my body and making a picture. Since I'm a bad painter, I'm doing something. But, you know, I, I, I couldn't become a painter. I couldn't become a cinematographer. So I, you know, took some, picked up, up things from here and there and created something, which is, I used to be really sometimes very, very confident because pictures were bought. And luckily, my pictures were bought almost at the price of painting. Because many people, you know, would say these are paintings. I, I find it uh, very, very funny. But an image is an image, whether it's a painting or a sculpture or a photograph. And the only difference is that a photograph or a you know, graphic print can have multiple prints. So its value goes down in terms of, you know, um, sadhvis or those people who want to acquire very, very exclusive images. But uh, in terms of uh, um, you paint with your hand, you paint with the brush or the camera, it's really irrespective. Uh, an, an ultimate visual image is an image. Uh, no matter how you created it. Thank you so much. Thank you.